And that was the kickoff track from another great record from our very talented artist that we're going to be speaking to in a few moments, and it's a true honor. This is The Upper Room with Joe Kelly in WVOF in Fairfield, Connecticut. From Paul Jackson Jr.'s Laid Back, we just heard the workout, and we uh, want to welcome to WVOF in The Upper Room with Joe Kelly, Paul Jackson Jr. How you doing, Paul? I'm great. I'm blessed in the Lord and highly favored. I'm doing good today. You, you know what? Yeah, you, you you spoke about the Lord, and, and obviously you're a spiritual person. And I was reading something a little back. You were talking about preparing for a record uh, in your spirituality. Tell us how the, you bring in, that into your music. Well, it's funny. What I do is, to tell you the truth, is I drive around in the car a lot with the radio off. Okay. And uh, it allows me to, to think and, and you know, hear from God and, and just, you know, come up with ideas. And, and I drive around with a... With a um, I have a tape recorder a lot of times, and sometimes I, I just have a, a piece of paper and a pencil, and, and ideas will come to me, and I'll write them down on a piece of paper, you know, write the, the music out, or I'll put them down on, on a court recorder, and a lot of that times those turn into songs that end up on CD. So it's kind of a process of, of listening, you know, um, you know, seeing what God has to say and, and direction-wise, or sometimes it might be something, hey, why don't you just try this idea or try this idea? So that's, that's kind of what I do is, is usually I, I prepare for a record by by being prayerful and being quiet. And uh, you have your own home studio? I, yeah, there's a little room here where I can, uh, you know, put my ideas down and, and come up with things, do pre-production and all that kind of stuff, and then we go to go to the real spot to, to lay the tracks down. Now, Lay It Back, amazing record on your, on your record company, right, Branch Records? Branch Records, the first project for Branch Records. Now, first of all, tell us about the choosing the name for your record company. I'm sure it's important and uh What's it like and, and the prospects for your own record label? Well, let's see. The name Branch Records, actually, you know, it's funny. We're talking about spirituality. It came from the Bible. Uh, Jesus said that I am the vine and ye are the branches. And if you abide in me, you know, you, you're fine. If not, there's nothing that can, apart from me, you can do nothing. So I said, man, that's kind of interesting. Apart from the Lord, I can't do anything. He said, I am the vine, ye are the branches. I said, Branch is a good name for a record company. So uh, this is the first release from Branch. That's, that's, that's how we got the title. And um, just kind of decided that, it was time for me to do that, time for me to just kind of focus on doing it myself and and uh, re- kind of being proactive, if you will, not really waiting for other folks, but, you know, taking the reins and, and really doing it myself. And so that's why we started Branch Records. Paul Jackson, Jr. His website is pauljacksonjr.com. You also uh, should check out his MySpace page and keep in contact with Paul. And, Facebook uh, as well. I've got Facebook jumping off. Oh, yeah, yeah. How about Twitter? Have you have you gotten into that? I haven't gotten to started Twittering yet. I've been seeing a lot of that. I haven't haven't done that yet. I only got so much time in a day, so I'm still working on on the other two. So I, I'll tell you, I'll tell you. I, I'm from a personal. I signed up for that. You know, you know, promotion stuff, and it, it just I'm like you too too much, and I, I tried to, you know, stop the Twitter, and you can't you can't uh, delete your account yet. Yeah, it's 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 kind of deep, you know. I mean, the same thing with Facebook. I mean, in one day I had like 500 friends, and I was like, wow, this is going to take a while to deal with. So, <laughs> you know. Yeah, in between all you got on your plate. And, you know, Paul Jackson Jr. is one of the, the most talented uh, musicians around, uh, tremendous guitarist. And, you know, I got to tell you this, growing up, you know, I'm looking around the home studio here and, and so many record albums. And, you know, I was a kind of kid, uh, and when I got into radio, I, I read the liner notes, and I always wondered who, you know, Greg Phil and Gaines, Paul Jackson Jr., and uh, Marcus Miller were, and you guys were the engine behind all this great music with these artists like Luther. And how did you get get into uh, the studio work? You know, it's an interesting story. Um, a lot of recommendations. I got a lot, a lot of re- recommendations from people like Ray Parker Jr. and and Al McKay from uh, Earth, Wind, and Fire, and Lee Rittenauer. And Patrice Russian actually was my first boss, and so I started working with her live, and then she brought me in the studio. And then also, interesting story, a guy by the name of Frank Wilson, who wrote uh, a lot of stuff for the Supremes and Temptations and Four Tops and Eddie Kendricks, at that time in the late 70s, was a record producer, and I started doing demos for him. And then he brought me in to, to work on a lot of records for you know people like Lenny Williams and Lamont Dozier and Mighty Clouds of Joy. And, and the funny thing is, he ended up being my pastor, which is kind of neat. Oh, wow. Yeah, so so a lot of recommendations, a lot of help from a lot of really good people. And uh, you, you're still at the call with, with uh, musicians beside between your own music. And uh, 
We're actually going to listen to a song right now, uh, another one, the title track off the record. And how how'd you sequence the record uh, as far as song, you know, the flow of it? Well, what I do is I call on the the, uh, the talents of a buddy of mine by the name of James Reese. Actually, James is featured on the CD singing "Can This Be Real." And James's background is in uh, is in DJing, doing you know big clubs. He used to was he was the DJ at, at Prince's Club in, in Los Angeles and a lot of other places. So he knows kind of like you know if a person were sitting listening to music or a person were on a dance floor, or, you know that kind of thing, what they would be feeling. So I kind of give James a copy of all the songs and ask him, you know, if you were a DJ, you know, you know, since you are a DJ, what order would you put them in? What do you think feels the best? And so I kind of let him sequence the record, and that's what he came up with. Right, so so props to James Reese, your buddy, and uh, this is the title track from from uh, Paul Jackson Jr.'s latest CD called Lay It Back. He's our special guest here at WBOF, and we'll come back and speak more with Paul. And that's the title track, once again, from Paul Jackson Jr., our special guest here on The Upper Room with Joe Kelly and WBOF. Paul is with us, and the album, you can uh, pick it up at pauljacksonjrjr.com, and uh, I'm sure all the, the Internet download sites as well, right? Right, little iTunes, Amazon.com, CDBaby.com, and uh, so yeah, all the, all the places, yeah. Uh, you know, in between, we'll we'll talk a little little later on about you know your your, your duties as a lead guitarist on in the American Idol band and and all the things going on there. But uh, you're going to be playing something dear to your heart, I'm sure, uh, at the uh, in Pennsylvania, in Reading, at the Berks Jazz Fest on April 3rd. And, and what's going on over there for you? Uh, I have a fun doing a organ tribute uh, organ trio tribute to jimmy smith and west montgomery with uh, bobby lyle so that's going to be a lot of fun my uh, my dad when i was a kid was always listening to jimmy smith records every every time i i remember getting up on the weekends i would hear jimmy smith records and so uh bobby and i got this idea and he said man let's why don't we do this this organ trio tribute so uh that's uh that's what we're gonna do now, we were hanging out with a couple guys who are playing the Berks Jazz Fest uh, tonight. When we were with them last night, um, J.D. Blair and Victor Wooten. So, right. yeah, a lot of great music going to be over there. It's a it's a really fabulous festival. It goes on, you know, for I think it's two or three weeks, and it's like different satellite spots all over the city. So it's just it's a great event. Uh, y- your job is lead guitarist, and, and I got to give you. You know, what a nice surprise this week when I saw you on uh, next to Adam Lambert performing uh, Smokey's song with uh, the acoustic guitar. It's always nice to see, you know, you guys, Ricky Minor and, and company, you're right up front with that. that The highlight of the of the week, everybody's saying. Man, that was a blast. We had a lot of fun, and musically it was it was really cool. You know, Smokey sitting there, and, you know, so it, musically that was a lot of fun for us. So, uh, you know, I'm glad people really liked it because we had a blast doing it. Uh, take us back to um, getting involved with, you know, the biggest TV show, playing music, uh, American Idol, and how, how you got into the, the band and playing the lead guitar. Well, the American Idol uh, job came as a result of my relationship with Ricky Minor. Ricky Minor was the musical director for Whitney Houston for years, and I played on the road in Whitney's band for five years. And, and after we left the road, uh, you know, we kept our relationship happening and went on to do a lot of TV shows like Motown Live and and several things on the Grammys and, and the Image Awards and lots of things. And so Ricky was asked to be the musical director for uh, for American Idol. And he said yes, and so he gave us a call and said, would you like to do it? I said, sure. So it was as a result of uh, my relationship with, with my buddy Ricky Minor. Now, now, how involved in, you know, something like the arrangement that uh, you performed uh, with Adam Lambert this week, do you get involved in the song? Well, with that, fortunately, because it was primarily acoustic guitar, very involved <laughs> you know it's, it's kind of like uh outside of adam saying okay you, you know let's make it feel this way it's it's kind of like all on the musicians at that point you know it was my, on myself ricky and teddy campbell who was playing the cajon right. so uh uh so a lot to, you know also big ups to kevin ricard because kevin ricard really kind of conceptualized the, the cajon vibe kevin ricard's the percussionist in the band so uh so we, we you know we kind of came up with it along with adam you find you find the artist competing there picking you guys your brains about about playing music and writing songs well writing songs no we don't really you know get a chance to converse with them that much on a musical level um usually just kind of musical ideas how do you think this song should go and their primary focus you guys are start that again excuse me um their primary focus is to 
conceptualize the songs that they have to choose from, which are obviously all come from you know top you know top radio hits and stuff like that. So really, they call on us to kind of come up with ideas of 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 you know how to help them maybe better you know present the songs that they're given or the songs that they choose. Uh, Paul Jackson Jr. here, Joe Kelly, and the Upper Room, and uh, if you're listening here at WVOF, we will also be re-airing it on UpperRoomWithJoeKelly.com. Gita so and myself in a couple weeks, Paul Jackson Jr., the uh, interview and music special. You know, we're going to slow things down just a bit from the album, lay it back, and, and play a song which which is outstanding, the ballad for Uncle Ronnie, who is, uh, it's a tribute to Luther Vandross. How do you get the name Uncle Ronnie? Well, if you notice, uh, with Luther Vandross, on every song that he wrote, the publishing company was Uncle Ronnie's Music. Okay. And, I, and I asked him one day, I said, well, who is Uncle Ronnie? He said, well, that's me. My middle name is Ron Zoni. Oh, okay. all, of his nieces, all of his nieces and nephews called him Uncle Ronnie. Hey, Uncle Ronnie, Uncle Ronnie. So uh, that was the name of his publishing company and his, and his production company. So when I came up with the tune, I figured I'd call it Ballad for Uncle Ronnie. Yeah, it's a, it's a really nice track, and, and you're working on this with uh, Teddy Campbell. Right, Teddy Campbell, uh, the drum and idol, and Alex, Alex Al and Dave DeLome as well. And Bobby Lyle played acoustic piano. All right, this is Paul Jackson Jr., another standout song from Lay It Back. It's uh, dedicated to Luther Vanders, who we, we definitely miss. Uh, ballad for Uncle Ronnie. We'll come back and speak more with Paul. And that's a great song right there from Paul Jackson Jr.'s Lay It Back Ballad for Uncle Ronnie, which uh, is his latest record on his own record label, Branch Records. And you can uh, go to pauljacksonjr.com to, to pick up the release and, and dig into the rest of uh, Paul's uh, discography. And uh, I believe this is your seventh uh, solo CD, right? This is my seventh CD, yeah. And uh, took a little break. And, of course, we understand why, because you've been so busy with working on uh the idol and and other projects but you know you know when i'm telling people you know musicians who aren't necessarily on the top 40 singing and everything and i tell them how great musicians there are you know i i love it as a, as a music lover to see whenever you come out with stuff so so thanks again i appreciate that brother I appreciate that a lot yeah so so you you've planning on uh getting out on the road and tell us about some of the things you got coming up this spring and summer well like you said we're doing Berks. Uh, got a couple of concerts in Los Angeles, and uh, also some things toward the end of the year. Doing a, a gig with uh, with my buddy Chuck Loeb and Kelly Minucci. We've been uh, doing some dates as, as the group Guitars. So we got a few of those dates coming up. I think one in New York, and uh, a few other things that are happening. You can check them out. Mostly, um, sometimes I forget. But if uh, you ever want to know, go to PaulJacksonJr.com, and and all the stuff is there. The touring schedule, but. You know, things are coming in, fortunately, all the time, so just trying to do more and more and more to meet the folks and play some good music live. Uh, you were you were born and raised in L.A., and uh, you went to music school at USC, home of the Trojans. So Absolutely. Right on. <laughs> you know, a, a, a tough loss in, in the college tournament, but, you know, the basketball tournament recently, but, you know, decent season. Yeah, you know, they did well. I mean, USC is more of a football school. but Yeah, right. That's, so. Yeah. Can't complain about, you know, the way you get playing on a gridiron. You know? Exactly. So so uh, what was the music school, school like and, and getting into it? We're more familiar over here with uh, Berkeley because we're on the East Coast, but right. how, how about out at uh, USC? Well, actually, USC's reputation is for being one of the best music schools around. Mm -hmm. And um, at that time when I went, they were like probably the only place that had a, um, outside of Berkeley, that had a major of studio guitar. So... Um, you know, it was a really, really good place to be, really good place to go to school. And, uh, you know, I really feel fortunate for, you know, having been able to go there. Well, when you were enrolled in the school, did you did you know that it was a, a short time you were going to be out there with playing world-class music with, with top-flight uh, musicians? I really didn't. I mean, you know, you have hopes and you have dreams and, and aspirations, but, you know, it was really just the blessing of the Lord that the, enabled me to, to get started and get things going. Now, w one thing that I, I really dug on your website that and, and plus in the liner notes of the the current cd is you show some of those old pictures you got a ton of pictures on your website which, which is great yeah. <laughs> um, going back in time you started out in acting how'd you get into that you know it's funny it, it's it, it's kind of like the story of my life i was on a game show with my brother and sister and my mom and dad 
and a producer saw me and said, hey, you know, I want to interview that kid for a part on television. And I got the part, and I ended up, you know, kind of getting an agent. And, I, and from the time I was seven to the time I was 15, I did like one part or one TV show or one commercial like a year, uh-huh. you know. But it was kind of cool. I mean, you know, I had, had a good time doing it, and, and uh, you know, it was, it was a lot of fun. And family, you know, music all through it. Your sister's in your band, right? Yep, she plays percussion. My sister's a percussionist. Right. Now, now tell us, you, you told a little bit about the Jimmy Smith records and everything, but what was it like putting a band together and everybody getting along? What did that early music uh, output sound like from the Jackson family? Well, you know, we had a lot of fun. I mean, because, you know, my mom and dad were like, hey, you know, do this right or, you know, like get along and stuff like that. Plus, we were, you know, we were having fun. I mean, when you're a kid, it's just supposed to be fun. Right. And we had a lot of fun. So just, you know, playing around town, playing at dances and parties and this and that. So we just we just kind of had fun, that's all. Uh, working on the record is your good buddy Cornelius Mims. And uh, how, how far back does your partnership go? Wow, I have known Cornelius. Wow, let's see. Well, well, he was on some Patrice records, right? Uh, not really. Okay. He may have been on one. I think, I think he was on one. Okay. But I've known Cornelius really since I was in elementary school. And then we went, ended up going to high school together and, you know, just kept working together in bands and records and productions and things like that. So I've known Cornelius most of my life. Wow. Yeah. How about things, have they changed since you guys are, you know, well-established in music as how you work? And... No, we still get in the studio and tell jokes and clown and, right. and, and uh, quote things from the movie Coming to America. And oh, great movie, yeah. That's our favorite movie. So we still kind of like, you know, still act silly and, and do the same stuff. Yeah, I uh, got Jeff Suttles and, and uh, Toy Ruffin buddies from from that movie. In the band. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> the band Sexual Chocolate. Yeah, exactly, right. So, uh, you know, Laid Back is available, Paul Jackson Jr.'s website, and uh, also check out his Facebook and MySpace page. And uh, tell us about, you know, you, you mentioned you don't listen to, so much music in your car because you're concentrating and trying to focus on things but uh you know when you kick back at home what would be some of the stuff you, we may be hearing other than your own music in your home well you probably hear straight ahead and you probably probably hear oldies okay and old hip-hop right. oh okay who, who are some of the artists you like hip-hop going back well you know i used to like black sheep and i used to like tribe called quest and and uh who else did i like um Oh man, um, Kumo D, and, oh, yeah, yeah. and uh, you know some of that kind of stuff because you know before you know rap really started getting into the profanity and the sexual thing and stuff like that. So I used to really you know brand Nubians I liked and you know all that kind of stuff. Right, right. Uh, you've got so much uh, things happen in L.A. What what is uh, the live music scene uh, like out your way, clubs and and otherwise venue? Well, there's still a lot of clubs going on. In fact, I'm going to hear a buddy of mine, uh, Cy Smith, tonight at the Mint, who also actually sings on American Idol. Really talented artist. You should check her out, uh, Cy Smith. But uh, there's still a lot of clubs where people can showcase, you know, put on some good music and things like that. I wish that there were more clubs that would bring people in on a little bit higher level in terms of, like, concerts. You know, uh, maybe some artists that can't quite fill the, the Nokia, you know, but might be able to fill clubs, you know, that are like you know, four or five, six hundred seater. Right. I wish right. I wish more of that were going on, but uh, there's not a lot of that in L.A. right now, and I wish there were more. Hey, speaking of Nokia, uh, your buddy Prince is going to be tearing up the town tomorrow night, I hear. Uh, I think so. Actually. Yeah, three, cl- three shows in one night. Crazy. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, something that I'm sure hurt when it happened and, and still, still probably a lot to it, but you had some guitar stolen recently, right? I did, actually. I had uh, three instruments actually stolen from my house, which was a major drag. Yeah, so, but they found one of them? Found one of them. Okay. And, uh, you know, hoping to get the other two, but, you know, it takes a lot to get me down. I mean, you know, getting your guitar stolen, you know, that's, that, that's, that's an inconvenience. Uh, right. Your house burning down, that's a problem. Right, right. So, uh, you know, I kind of look at things in perspective. I, I have a whole lot more to be thankful for than I do to complain about. And, you know, I can get another guitar. Right, right. It won't stop me from playing. So, you know, like I said, it was it was hurtful and inconvenience, but, you know, I, I I just have to keep on stepping. I mean, God has blessed me way too much to just, you know, get, to, you know, discouraged about that kind of stuff. And uh, let's say, you know, you pick up a new guitar. Is, is there like a, a 
a time frame that you, you know, like working in a baseball glove that you feel comfortable with a new guitar? It takes a while. You know, oh, you just get to play it for a while, you know, uh, a few months, a couple years or whatever. It takes a minute, but, you know, you make it happen. Right. Well, what were you playing uh, on the Idol this week, playing uh, with Adam Lambert? Oh, very interesting story. It was a brand new acoustic guitar that's just been put out by Paul Smith. Who was it put out by? Paul Reed Smith, PRSGuitars.com. Oh, okay. And uh, they're known for their electric guitars, but they just started making acoustic guitars and amplifiers, both of which are pretty incredible. So I got a chance to play one on, on the show, and that's what you heard, the, the PRS acoustic. What do, you, what do you guys work on? What's the theme for this upcoming week? You know, I don't know yet. I have to check it out. I'll be surprised when I hear the music on Sunday. Oh, wow. So you, there's the not, too, not too much sound. Wow, you guys are all the top of your craft, but they don't give you that much lead time, right? No, not really at all. We, we basically record the music on Sunday and play it live on Tuesday. So we really have very little time. Now, now how about um, to be involved like in, in a show like American Idol with the, you know, the house band and everything? Does everybody have to be able to read music? Yes. Okay. Because we have to do so much music, and very quickly, it's it's a it's a must. Right. You know, you have to be able to read music and, and assimilate the parts pretty quickly. And those that can't get weeded out fast, right? Well, you, you, it's kind of a thing where not, well, yeah, I guess you could put it that way, where you, you, you kind of weed yourself out, you know? Right, right. Um, it, you know, it's like the old saying, the more you learn, the more you can earn. Oh, right, right. And uh, so it's just a situation where uh, you want to be that much better than the next guy or, or that much... Uh, more on top of things it's funny ricky minor the md wrote a book called there's no traffic on the extra mile oh wow. you're the guy that's willing it's a great book you should check oh, it out oh okay uh, and if you're the guy that's willing to to go the extra mile to stay up the hour later to to stay after school to get up before school you know to uh you know to to uh to not go out and hang with your friends you know or whatever and you're willing to put in the time then you're the guy that's going to succeed you talked about your uh, first job with uh, as pat- working for Patrice Russian. Right. Uh, yeah, she's such an amazing musician. Does she still teach out that way? She actually doesn't uh, teach too much. Well, she teaches part time at Berkeley. She does, I think, four weeks a year at Berkeley, and then still does a lot of film scoring and arranging for things and stuff, and still playing around. So I get a chance to see her. Not not as much as I'd like, but I, I still do see her a lot. Uh, you, you'll be right out in Pennsylvania at the Berks Jazz Fest on April 3rd. A great, great show, guaranteed. And you can always check com for the latest on his uh, tour dates. Go out and support Independent Music Branch Records and lay it back. Bring some extra money because I'm sh- sure you have a table set up to buy the CD. I will, I will. Yeah. Now, now tell us about uh, your family because... You know, something really nice in the liner notes that uh, you wrote about them and how they get involved in, in your project. Tell us about your kids. Well, let's see. My daughter, Lindsay, sings background on about four songs on the CD. And my son, Paul III, helped me with uh, the song actually called Hit It that uh, we just kind of like conceptualized together. So, uh, you know, they helped. And, and my daughter, is, she's a, she's a uh, uh, music major in college. And, and my son is, you know, starts singing and playing piano and stuff. So they're, they are following in the old footsteps here. Right, right. And you still got a lot of a lot of time to go to keep on making great music, so we look your, forward to your that. Lips, from your lips to God's ears, I hope. Right, right. <laughs> so, yay, yeah, speaking of, uh, you know, Hit It, we're going to go out. Uh, first of all, we want to thank you because, you know, after all these years, you know, listening to your music and, and seeing you everywhere, it's been great to have you on. Man, Joe, thanks for having me, brother. And, and if you come to the East Coast, you, you get out to the New York, Connecticut area, or is that? I do sometimes, yeah, actually. Yeah. yeah you're always welcome to come by the studio. We have bands, and you can do a little set in the studio if you want. I appreciate that. Yeah. Great. So we're going to go out with the song which uh, your son is on this record, Paul Jackson the Third, Hit It. And then uh, we're going to bring the funk in with uh, Swing It, which you wrote. Miss Mitty Miss, Music. Yeah. Tell us about Miss Mitty. Who's that? Miss Mitty, uh, that was my grandmother. Her nickname was Mitty. Oh, okay, right. Uh, so, you know, my grandmother passed actually two years ago, so... Uh, you know, I figured I'd name the publishing company after her, keep her memory alive, and, you know, stuff like that. So that's why I call it Miss Mitty Music. Yeah, great, great tribute to her. So thanks so much, Paul, my brother, and yeah. and uh, go out and see Paul at the Berks Fest in Reading, Pennsylvania. Don't come out. That's right. He'll be there. How many guitars you, you travel hey, with? Hey, Dad. What are you doing? Just bringing one. Bringing well, a hollow I'm trying to come up oh, with something okay. new for myself.